So I just bought this lens used. What is good YouTube? It's that one camera guy back at again with another video for you. This is going to be a short review on the Sony 50 millimeter f1.8 optical steady shot lens. Now I've been eyeing my I've been eyeing my eyes on a lens like this for some time now because I do guides and tutorials on the A6000, 6300, 6500, and I've wanted to get this lens as a comparative to the 50mm FE as well as even the Zeiss 55 f1.8. It's a really interesting lens, it has stabilization, and I know it piques a lot of people's interest, especially if they're getting started. It's about a two to three hundred dollar lens, depending on where you get it, and I just wanted to get my hands on it so I can actually test and review it myself in terms of giving feedback and user guidance for those of you who are interested in this. So, it's really weird. I ended up not getting this lens in the beginning because when I first started, I already had a 35 f1.8 OSS lens, which I really, really liked. And then I picked up an A7R2 after the A6300, and I quickly jumped to the Zeiss 55 f1.8. And this thing is a really sharp lens, and I didn't really find a reason or necessity to get the 50 millimeter f1.8 OSS. Now I did pick up the 50 millimeter FE f1.8 when it came out this past year, this past, this year, I guess, because it's a full frame, about 200 to $250 lens, which is a really nice lens for those of you that are jumping over to full frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this next topic, which is deciding on a lens. So between the OSS and the full frame version, APC versus full frame version, how do you decide on which one to get? Well, I really do think if you're in the crossroads, if you don't know which one you should buy, if you have an A6000 or an Alpha 6300, I highly recommend that you get the OSS model. And the reason for that is because A6000 and Alpha 6300 don't have any stabilization. So you definitely want this lens. It's really great and handy to have. Now the other thing is if you have an Alpha 6500, you have the IBIS feature, which is the in-body image stabilization. So having a 50 millimeter FE is gonna be stabilized with that body. And what's really cool is that if you use APS-C and you plan to add on a full frame body later on, well, you already have a full frame lens. On the contrary, if you get the APS-C version of this lens, you're not gonna be really able to take full advantage of it on a full frame body. So that's the reason why I would push you towards that model, the full frame for those reasons, and the APS-C version if you don't have stabilization already on the body. Another question I'll cover is if you actually need stabilization. The importance of stabilization comes into play if you're recording video. Now, if you're trying to stabilize your footage, having stabilization is going to help dramatically and it's going to make it look like a tripod shot. And that's always a good thing. If you don't have it, you're going to see a lot of micro jitters in your footage and you're not going to be very happy about it. Furthermore, if you're shooting photos in low light environments and you need to use a slow shutter speed to keep your ISO low, Stabilization comes in clutch, and you can use some slower shutter speeds, 1 15th or even less than that, and get some sharp images with the optical steady shot, which would be very difficult if you had this lens without optical stabilization. Now, first of all, I wanna let you know, I am not the de facto lens expert. I'm learning, I'm trying to progress my knowledge on that. So as far as my testing methodologies, they're not 100% bulletproof. This is more of just giving you a general idea of the lens performance um, overall. Now, there's tests and uh, charts that you can go to online that are much more effective than what I'm gonna show you. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things I did. So let's take a look here. This is just a picture of a wall, and then this is f1.8 with the APS-C lens. You can see the vignette on the edges, on the corners. If you keep going, this is f2, f2.2, f2.5, f2.8. It's sort of like by f2.8, it seems to kind of go away. f4, it's pretty much gone from the looks of it. So between f2.8 to f4, you're gonna notice that vignette completely go away. So if that kind of thing bothers you, that's what it looks like. But for the most part, you could typically just do lens profile corrections and it'll remove the vignettes already. All right, so now what we're gonna do is compare the full frame version. So let's go ahead and take a look at it here. So the left-hand side is the APS-C and the right-hand side is full frame. So let's go ahead. You'll notice that they both vignette, but the vignette, the vignette is a bit stronger on the APS-C, but let's jump to the center of the actual frame. Uh, looking at the actual frame, they look very similar in performance. I'm not seeing anything stand out. I would give the right-hand side to the full frame just a hair better in sharpness, but uh, I wouldn't say it's like 
a home run. If we look at the corners, we're going to see something very interesting. And again, this is where some of my testing might be flawed to some degree, or there might be some optical issues with the actual lenses themselves. But as you can see here on the left-hand side, the APS-C version is much sharper on the corner here versus the right-hand side. It's very, very, um, it's blurry, definitely. Again, sharp on the corner here. And then, again, we're, we're wide open. But here is what you notice. On the right-hand corner on the full frame, it's not uh, blurry. It's actually consistent with the, um, th that one. And there's a little bit of blurriness on this one here. So I don't know if I'm noticing some decentering. I know some of you can help correct me on that in the video. Or maybe it's not completely 100% parallel with the wall itself that might be creating that look. So just keep that in mind. I'm just saying that overall sharpness, it seems like the APS-C seems to be more consistent across the board on the model that I have. All right. So let me go ahead and jump over to uh, f2.8 for example here. I'm not going to go through every single example. So we're at f2.8 now. Let's take a look here. They look uh, pretty consistent. Sharpness looks pretty good on both. And let's take a look at the corners here. It's getting a little bit better for the uh, full frame one there. And it's just sharper for the APS-C version. It's just getting better. Okay, that's also pretty good. And I think once we hit like f5.6, it looks pretty good across the board. Okay, that's f8. All right, f5.6, here we go. All right, so this f5.6 on both of these lenses. I typically don't find myself shooting at these ranges. Oh yeah, so the corner sharpness is much better now on the full frame. Corner sharpness is much improved on the full frame. Same thing on that side, same thing on that side. So just from my initial impressions of it, that's, it seems like by 4 to 5.6 is when you're going to see that sharpness kind of even out for both of these lenses. But I would give the edge to the APS-C lens for this example. And this was shot on the A6000. So now what we're going to do is jump over to some other ones looking at text now. And again, uh, keep it in mind as far as testing methodologies. I try to keep it as steady as possible and manual focus on the actual images. So if we take a look here, what I'm noticing is the sharpness looks pretty consistent on both. I give the slight edge to the APS-C, but I'm starting to see some fringing. I don't know if that's the right term, but you see that kind of, that green kind of fringing showing up in some purple fringing on the actual text on the right-hand side. So that's what I'm noticing, but the one on the left seems to be much, uh, fr it's freer of that issue. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump to like 2.8. I know I should be jumping over to smaller increments, but um, we're just trying to get a general idea. Again, this is not a full-on review of this, just trying to give you a perspective on the actual performance of the two lenses. Okay, the, the fringing seems to be more controlled now on the right-hand side, and the sharpness looks to be very, very similar to both sides there. So by 2.8, it doesn't seem to be a problem with the actual lenses themselves. So that is how that looks. All right, so this lens is pretty good so far, but there are some issues with it that I want to point out. Well, I wouldn't say construction is really an issue. Just know that it's kind of scratch prone. It's kind of plasticky, the design and build. Obviously, there's no like weather sealing on this lens. Uh, just be really careful with it. And again, I bought it used, so I do notice that dust has kind of found its way inside of the elements, so it's not completely weather sealed. You're gonna find some dust in there. I just wanna point that out for you. The other thing is that the stabilization motor is kind of noisy on this particular lens. I don't know if it's just mine, so I'd really love your help if you have this lens, if the stabilization makes a lot of noise, or if you hear it. at all. When you're taking photos, you'll hear the stabilization motor go off infrequently. But if you're doing video, you'll definitely hear it every now and then going off. And it can be a little bit jarring. And if you're putting audio on here, let's say a microphone or something, it's definitely going to pick up the sound of the stabilization motor. So that might be a kind of a negative about this lens that you should know about. So again, it could just be my particular model because I got it used. So help me out. <laughs> Please help me in the comments below and let me know if your model has any issues. And that's going to do it for me in this video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out my other content. Please leave a comment below letting me know about other lenses you'd like me to take a look at, and I'll try to put on a to-do list. And with that said, I'm your host, That One Camera Guy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye. <laughs>